gentlemen, boys and girls, and all music lovers across the globe. Welcome to the first episode of the Rebranded Chacha Spotlight Series on the Chacha Music Review Podcast. Just in case you're wondering what the Chacha Spotlight Series is all about, this is where I get to have a chat with fast rising artists. I talk about their music and their struggles, and of course, my name is still Apis Tonova. The Tata Spotlight series is about introducing the world to a new artist and also introducing the new artist to the world. So without any further ado, let me introduce to you YDs in the pound. Yeah, what up my people? It's your boy YDs in the pound. How are you doing? I'm being good. I'm being good. Um, can you tell us about yourself? My name is Aziz Waid with the stage name YDs in the pound. Okay, so um, YDs, it's, it's nice to have you on this um, podcast. My this player. is the uh, first episode of the rebranded spotlight series and you'll be my first guest so wow, thank you for being on the podcast it's my pleasure so um, let's talk about let's talk about your stage name why is in the pound well from the name i gave to you earlier my name is Waid aziz so it's just the fusion of my name and my soul name okay why d and d i z i z in the aziz, aziz. Okay. So making it YD. what about in the pond where did that mm, come from? In that point, it's just the title of my songs that I wrote some years back. Okay. So it was just like you seen the band Tumbolo. So my uncles, my guys just started calling me, Why this? In that point, in that point, come and sing in that point for me. So I just started including the name Why this? And that's just the brand okay. right now. All right. So um, Why this? Tell us, you know, your musical background. How did you start doing music? Oh, well, as far back as I could remember. I could remember that time me and my brother, you know, we just, I would stand on all these uh, little chairs and be performing. Okay. My brother will be giving me some drums and people around the street will be calling me to come and sing for them. So we just got to a particular point. I started doing all these plantation points songs. Okay. Okay. My girl was like, guy, you can actually be a musician. I was like, a musician? You mean I'll be singing my own personal song? Where would I, where would I start from? You know, <laughs> I love to sing other people's songs, but me writing my own songs sounds was like yeah. it was like something that would be very, very difficult. Not until I started it. I just I did the first one, the second, and it just started coming before I knew it. Tell us how you felt, you know, writing your own song for the first time. What motivated you to say, I want to write my song? What was the inspiration behind all that? Uh, I would say the first thing that actually pushed me was just like something negative came from someone. Okay. So that person was like, you can never be a musician. Okay. Do you know what it takes to write a, 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 a old song? Okay. I was like, so ah, if Two Face could write songs over songs over songs, why can't I just start mine? So I started writing, you know, I wrote a verse. For like a whole week, I could only write a verse. Okay. But eventually, I concluded my first song and I started singing it to people like, feel it, how do you feel? Could you start about what I do? Cause I got a chance to make my note. I just like there will surely be hope. I wish my good and later my soul. I don't get out of that job. I was like, wow, this is this is vibe. Let's go with it. So I just started. That was my first. So track. how was your first studio experience? Like going to the studio for the first time and actually being on the mic and realizing that, ah, oh boy, I'm Since about like, to do my song. <laughs> Yeah. My my first experience, you won't believe it. I had my first experience at um, Indomix Studio. Okay. That was way back in Shagamu. That was like, the same the same Indomix. Same Indomix. Yes. Stan. So when I got there, I got there with it, with with that my um, big what's it called? Rainbow. It was full of songs, lyrics, and I showed it to Indomix. So it was just like there's nothing I would do with this. It's only what comes from you oh, yeah. that I'm after. Okay. So I was I was just like as if I was a baby. So I just had to drop it somewhere and I just moved closer to the mic. And he was playing me beats and I was just dropping everything I had in my head. I was flowing as if I've been recording before. Though I was not recorded that day, but I was able to show my recording skill, my vocal skill to him and he really he actually encouraged me like you can actually do it. So I was made to come back, like pay for some studio time and studio, studio section and all that. But, but to do that was the problem, so that was why I couldn't record my first song. And that was way back in 2008. Okay. Then in 2010, that I got my Fox experience. Okay. S Cube. Okay. So when I got there, so to record a song wasn't something that was so scary or something that I was so feel like I I loved like wow this is what I've been thinking of. Okay. So it's like I can actually do this. So I just started building that self confidence. Like I can do this. But, um, why this? What will you call your style of music? Afrofusion. 
or will I just call it Afro Fuji? Okay. So I have this unique Fuji vibe that, Fuji I, put, vibe okay. that I put on any kind of genre of songs. Is it R&B, soul? I will always find my way to give you that to kind of that. That's the unique thing. Okay, so tell us about um, the experience behind releasing your first song. It's a different thing recording. recording. It's a different thing releasing. You know, because you've recorded now for your mind, I don't do this song. Then now you've put it outside for people to hear. What was it like, you know, putting the song outside for people to hear? And what was the major feedback that you got? Well, my first track, actually, you know, then we didn't have the likes of all these bloggers putting songs on website. Now, website, okay. For downloads. So I, I was able to go online, you know, search for where I can put my music. So I found places like SoundCloud and MySpace. So which means that my space was my still, space yeah, was, yeah. It, was still trending. So, which means I, I had to do it by myself. I put it on those websites, but I did much of transferring the songs from phones to phones. phones. Mm. And I could tell you, mm. brother, that first experience mm. huh, was a very <laughs> big, was a very big group to go because even, even my family members, they were not even in my town. People were calling me all the all the way from Canada, telling me like, "Wow, I heard that your first song, good guy." I was just like, wow. Even my dad, he didn't support me at the beginning of this struggle, you know, this music struggle or nothing. Okay. But when he heard the first track, like my, my, my dad would put me in his car and he would play that song without even seeing anything about <laughs> it. <laughs> like, so that first experience, I won't lie to you, the feedback was so, so much encouraging. You know, uh, should I say approval? Because we know the way it is in Nigeria. When you tell your parents you want to do music, music. they be like, eh? All things. I mean, if you're in Nigeria, if you're not being a doctor or a lawyer or an engineer, then you're a disappointment. <laughs> <laughs> so, what was it like when you started out doing your music? Were you ever afraid that your parents were not going to support you? So it was something that you were doing they didn't know, or what was it like exactly? Ironically, at the beginning, I mean, like I told you during my kid time. Mm. My parents were not disturbing me when it comes to music. Like you just normally they, sing. They freed me. They they could see the way I was so passionate about listening to music, dancing to music, singing music all day long, and they wouldn't complain. Okay. So I was like, I already have their approval. Not until I go to like all these places to the study, I would come back from school and I'll be reading written lyrics books. I will be cramming songs. What do you do? Where you they find? Like, how was your problem? So they started, started like they were just so much ash on me when it's coming to music. They don't even want me to sing. I would gather, gather my siblings, we'll be trying to practice a song and they would just budge in and, and lash us all with you know, abusive words and I would even feel like, ah, am I ever going to do this for you? Then my, I think one of my uncles just told me, guy, just, just have to pass your whole level and pay pass. Make sure you come out with flying colors, you get admission to university, then you can do your thing. God placed that proof for me, man. So I was so, so focused on passing my child, exactly. making sure I get admission that particular year. So, and I tried to like ask around which kind of university can I go and face music? We were like, guy, go to Rosu, don't do it for Rosu. <laughs> no, do See, sincerely, I didn't come to OOU to read. Okay. I came to OOU because of music. Not until I got there, I realized, like, guy, I can actually do better. Let me learn this. <laughs> let me let me do both together. Do you understand? So, which means I left home, I came to university, and I was able to mingle with other people, I mean, like minds, that were able to, you know, brought me up and I started doing music and all the feedbacks, I mean everything I do in school, it gets back to there. And you're just like, wow, this guy is doing fine. Let's just free him. Before I knew it, my my dad was just like, guy, give me all your songs on my phone. That day, yeah, I was so happy to share it with his friends, family members, like my son, you know that my son now, you know you he sang the song again. So ever since I started making money, you know, I wish to like Baba, take this one, the music, oh, wow, this music, and we, 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 we're just like, my guy, you're gonna make it, 
but for them go about feeling shape for my shape to bear law. You know, all this kind of so parental prayers or music. Seems, it seems then I was just like, wow, I'm good to go. How was it for you being a student, you know, and also juggling music together? How were you able to balance those two life? Well, let me just say the results should be able to answer that question. Mm-hmm. Uh, before I graduated, I had to, uh, what's it called? I was like, what's it called? Music, best musical act given by CMA. And as a, the only artist and producer, I mean, award-winning artist and also award-winning producer in the history of OU, I was able to get that. So that's a musical result. So what about the academic results? Yeah. I was able to graduate with two, two. So you mentioned, you mentioned also just right now, you know, you mentioned being um, getting an award for music production. So is this safe to that why this is also, you know, a, a record producer? For sure. For so sure. How, how did that, how, how did you move because it's one thing being a music artist, then it's one thing deciding to say you want to go into music production. production. And is it the fact that you felt like, oh boy, if I don't blow as artist, I will blow as producer? Or was that what which led you to production? Or tell us about the production story. Well, what's worth doing is worth doing well. Yeah. That production story started from the fact that I wanted to do my own first song. Okay. I couldn't afford the studio session. Okay. So one of my guys introduced me to FL Studio. Okay. So we started composing all these shitty beats. Okay. I will call it shitty beat right now. But then they were as in they sound so mad. Okay. So I was able to record my first song by with my phone. By your phone. Okay. With my phone before I actually experienced the studio, studio record. Yeah. So from there I was like, huh, this beat is so whack, so I can't even go to production. Before I knew it, I would be the one to help my producer to juggle songs together, to help some artists to build their verses and songs. Before I knew it, I was able to gather much more studio experience, being around the studio producer almost every, every time. time. Like, so so before I knew it, you have all the studio rats like studio this. Studio rats, yeah, <laughs> you understand. I wouldn't even go to my own house, from, from class to studio, from studio back home to go and just go and sleep. Then I just realized like, Way back when I started writing my own songs, I would create the vibes from my own head, just like a producer. I would produce many vibes and I would be putting the lyrics. That means I can actually do this to let me go and learn more. So I I tried to learn more. Then I tried to practice the field. I mean the little things that I knew about production. I tried to pra- practice it. Before I knew it, I was able to, to bring up stars even in this that particular school game, you understand? So I was able to bring up stars, then I was just like if you can actually make a study, you're a superstar, my guy. So, let me just say, I had, I had good feedbacks from my clients and even from my own self. Like, I did songs, people were like, wow, I love this mix, wow, I love this beat, you can actually do better. So, I, I, I kept pushing, 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 and pushing and keeping, I keep on learning new things about music production. Is there any song that you're actually working on right now? Is there a new song that you're working on right now? Uh, actually, I have, I have it on mind to release a song, so I'm trying to work on it, but I've already abandoned it for a while due to the new um, series that I just started running on my... I started hosting a Weekend Classic Vibes show okay. on Instagram, YouTube, uh, AudioMark, WhatsApp, status, you understand? So where I get to do my own cover songs of, I mean, cover of classic songs, okay. like I did for Craig David's Walk Away, Okay, so you, you do that on your social media? Social media, and also I'm trying to push that. So, which means I'm going to be releasing on a weekly basis. So, I'm more focused on the covers for now. The covers for now. But actually, I have it in mind to release it soon. So, let, but let's just say, before the end of the year, we'll get something new from YDs. Inshallah. All right, so no problem. <laughs> and now, let's talk about let's talk about your first song that I heard. And that was um, the... It was part of the song that made the Don Jazzy Top 50 Enigma. How did you go into that competition and tell us everything concerning the whole Enigma competition? Well, concerning Enigma, the truth is that I didn't know anything about the competition. I didn't okay. even know it was a competition. Okay. I just, no, I told you like, I, I used to be a studio rat, so I just got to studio that day and SQ was about to record one guy on that particular beat. Okay. So perhaps they didn't, the, the negotiation didn't go, go well. well. So that guy left the studio and I was just like, guy, come on, do something like this. And even his manager was like, why this guy do something better than this? So let's, let's see. Okay. Yeah, I do have money. Is it? Just go and record. Just go and record. Guy. So the guy was like, I, I want you to give me something, you know, that kind of your, your style, that Fuji vibe, with blending with this kind of... 
See, all this guy Illuminati is beat up. Oh, bro. Okay, let me just, let me just give it a try out. So I did, before I knew it, this guy F Raps. He's now in the US. Okay. F Raps submitted this jam for me. Okay. And they told me like that thing is a competition and uh, they love my entry, so they already have to meet to submit on that. No problem. No, no, he's one of my guys. D12. That one is working on one like the UFM right now. Okay. He came to me at the Faculty of Education, like, guys, send me that Enigma song. I was like, Enigma. Well, let me send, send it to him. So I just sent it to him. I was like, ah, in fact, when he saw that, he made it off with him. I was just like, ah, like, yeah, where did you see that one? <laughs> he just showed me on Facebook. I saw it. I swear, I left PS and I was going home. Then this guy, Biola Swagger, okay. he was on bike. He had to stop the bike. Like, where is Hey, wait, how far now? I saw, I saw that entry. I saved that song. Ah, you might be know, you have to wait the bike man who was collecting the song. That was the first song that that kind of guy would stop because he used to be a celebrity in that song from okay. that time. So, like, he stopped the of that song. And it was just like, wow, so this song could go this far away. Thank God. Now, like, like you rightly said, you didn't know about the competition. So, it was more like being in the right it. place at the so, right time. Yes. Yeah, so would you say that, you know, had a big impact? in your music career going forward because from what you said first of all you didn't know about the competition you didn't even know you got no, you got chosen as a top 50 until people started Tell telling you yes. so how that's you know how did that experience all in all change you musically I mean, I or how did it change yes music musically career. i wouldn't like you within the school premises yeah that respect okay. increases i mean it increased fine but musically i mean generally I would just say Don Jazzy followed me on Twitter after okay. that because it seems like I was the only singer among the entries. Other oh, entries, okay. Yes, so he followed me and I tried to follow him back, like to DM him and nothing came out of it. So I wouldn't say it has much impact. Okay. Unless the fact that people around me were able to, re- to recognize and recommend me for like doing an international entry that made it to that kind of place today. That means these guys. I mean, this guy is, is good. But was that like, you know, a stepping stone for you? Like, okay, you know what? If Don Jazzy could, you know, put out a competition and I made it tough, it's like, okay, you know what, guy, just keep doing what you are doing. It, it only boosts my, my self confidence. Confidence. Let me just put it that way. Okay, okay. Let's assume Don Jazzy is listening to this right now. Let's assume Don Jazzy is listening to this right now. What is that one thing you would like to say to Don Jazzy now? I'd like to say to him. Yes. Like this, this is your, this, this is your opportunity to reach out to Don Jazzy again. again. So let's assume Don Jazzy is listening to this right now. You know. Well, I'll just put it this way. Don Jazzy, man, what up, man? Big up to you and thanks for following me the other time. It's why this and upon. Come on, check on me. Sign me up, man. <laughs> Sign me up. Huh? I'll be expecting your reply, man. Uh, Thank you. I hope if Don Jazzy signs you, I'll get my commission. What is I'm going in? This is what I'm doing. This is I'm doing. It. Busy on the mixtape. Listen as I'm blowing it, making it blow like a radio hit. I make you go, break it down, break it down, break it down, baby. Let me see. What would you say is your biggest challenge as a fast rising, you know, music artist? Music artist. Yeah. Um, firstly, you still gonna make mention of the financial capability okay. to promote your own songs because it's all about music promotion or music business is all about you having a quality product and get it to what the right, the targeted audience. So right now, I believe I have the quality products and I have tendency to produce more and more of it. So, it's just so what about avenue that avenue of getting it from the studio to those people who are ready to listen to it? Anyway, that is what this that is promotion. That is what this segment is all about. The Chacha Spotlight series. That is what it's all about. It's about introducing the artist to the world and introducing the world to the artist. So that is why we are here. <laughs> well, I think I think this this is just an avenue for me to just give kudos to to you and Mr. Nova for bringing up this kind of platform to showcase us. I'm telling you, before now, the last time I had this kind of interview was like, let me say six years ago. Okay, so, um, 
if you are going to you right 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 we're talking from the beginning you mentioned you know the likes of um plantation boys which i'll mm-hmm. love which i'll love say from what you said you know probably where your childhood um should i say the music the musicians you listen to when you were young so musical idol yes yeah, your musical idol so in terms of nigeria which other artists would you say inspired or you Aside plantation boys. Yes, aside aside plantation boys. I would say Brimo. You say Brimo. And Brimo, I I started doing my thing before I heard Brimo. Though. Okay. Even my brother played his song for me for the first time. I was like, guy, this this guy, there was one guy that was singing like you. Can you imagine that? <laughs> oh, oh. I was just like Brimo. I, I heard Brimo some years back when he did. But that's only where I have heard that song. Oh, that means we have this kind of Fuji like. Vibe. Uh, vibe, you understand. But before I knew it, this guy has gone so much global that I I can't help but just see him as my own mentor, my own movie. I like I love him so much. Where why this wants to create a music, you know, what inspires you to create your music? What motivates you to create your music? You know, I've some couple of artists will tell you anything inspire me, or when I you know take one or two, you know, what exactly inspires you to create your music? Uh, firstly, I know where you're going, so I would just say, like I said in my song, and people always use that, like that comment. Like, it's a natural lightness, Tony, no giddy girl. <laughs> so that kind of thing, like natural lightness, I'm one of these kind of artists and producers that doesn't need to take anything alcoholic before they can produce something. Okay. And whenever I want to sing, what do I want to sing about? Love, that means I've been inspired by my loved one. So let me sing about love. Ah, perhaps I'm in a party mood, I would just like, Get anything my head. Hey, what today? Ah, I go down what today? Just like right now. Yeah. Anything I just like. Wow, I feel like dancing right now. Let me give them a dance every beat, and I'm just step on this stuff. So whatever I feel like doing, I try to put myself in that environment, and that's what that ego does to them. So, so me, I the eye without ego. If you smoke for my side, say like why pass it? Because that's <laughs> natural like, and people do like. I'm always ready. All right, like you said, uh, you said you can you know, think about love, but let's 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 get a little bit personal now. Let's okay. get personal since you mentioned love. <laughs> so let let, let 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 the ladies know to all the ladies that might mm. be listening to the podcast right about now. Yeah, is um is why this single or is he or is he in an entanglement <laughs> or is he or is he just on a low key? You know, <laughs> you know at this at this level of mind. I shouldn't be responding to this kind of question, you know. <laughs> but you know what? I would just try to be more, uh, how would I put it, diplomatic with it. Okay. So I would just okay. say um, something like, musically, I'm single. <laughs> and realistically, I'm even married. Like, you understand? <laughs> so musically, why is he single? But reality, he's married. <laughs> Loving you, loving you, loving you, loving you from day one when I collect your number. Loving you, loving you, loving you, loving you, loving you from day one when you draw me close out. Loving you, loving you, loving you, loving you from day one when you say salam alaikum. Loving you, loving you, loving you, loving you from day one when I set my eyes on you. Um, in terms of collaboration, which Nigerian artists are you, you know, looking forward to work with? Well, I'm looking forward to work with the likes of um, Mayo Kun and uh, Vaduman. That's Kiz Daniel, right? Kiz Daniel. What about Brimo? Since you said Brimo is your... Oh, <laughs> Brimo has gone so, so far, but I think I just have to increase my own level of, uh, how would I put it, my visibility, my online visibility, okay. you know, global visibility, so that I can have, uh, so that I can be in a better position to, you know, converse with him. Like I would like to work with you. So yeah, let's yeah. let's let's leave the whole music aside. So let's you know, let's get to know, you know, a uh, Wahid right now. You know, as you said, let's we, we are done with Wahidis. We've known you know a little bit about Wahidis. So okay. outside music. Who are you like? What's your what's your favorite food? Do you watch football? You know, what do you do outside music? I'll just put that in one verse. Yeah, yes, yeah. One no, one sentence, not one verse. Let me see. <laughs> As is why it yeah. He's uh, practicing Muslim. Okay. In the Sufi order. Okay. Arsenal fans. Okay. I love to eat. I love to eat Eba. You understand? Yeah. I love making people laugh. But you know what? 
I'm a business mogul. Mm. I'll call myself like, like, right from within, I'm telling you, like, I love doing business. Like, okay. I mean, I'm a general merchant. You okay. know? I have, I'm a serial entrepreneur. Like, I have a whole lot of ventures that I'm running aside music. Because, you know, music is capital intensive. Intensive. An investment, so you just have to like get something in doing aside that to keep pushing your personal life, keep your family in order and in good shape, and also the music business too. So that's good. Before, before I, you know, before I let you go, let me just allow you to, you know, one or two freestyle for the people, so at least they can, you know, enjoy, you know, the white this vibe, the Indapon vibe. So let's let's hear you do a little bit of freestyle. You, know. you just give them. Yeah, you said it for your Why this in the pond? In the pond music. Always undo me so. All the fair wish I could eat you. All the things we did, I wish we could eat too. And those we never do, we for still do. If I could reach you, we for still do, baby. The facts say I miss you. No me say I want you back. You know the will of God for me, neither am I. You taught me how to love. I wish you never lied. My love gave meaning to your life. You can't deny. So my meant to be together, but not forever. Even if it sticks so long, you know go matter. Now you gon' could wait to witness my God blessing. More success, more blessing. It will me. Yeah. In the pond music. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, Ladies and gentlemen, that, that is the voice of why this in the pond. Just let me quickly say this for those of you that have been wondering why this, why this, why this. Why this is the person responsible for the production of the new Cha Cha signature tune. Yes, for those of you that are saying, oh, I love the new Cha Cha signature tune. Why this in the pond is the person that produced that tune, that produced that beat. So, help me say thank you very much to why this in the pond. So, oh, Tell the people how can they get to you know listening to your song and how can they can follow you on social media all your social media handles. Very very easy. Tweet like Eli post. Just follow me on Instagram at Y T Z N A P O N D Y D I Z I N T A P O N D. Can you can, can you take that slowly slowly slowly, slowly. <laughs> just like a rap? Y T I Z I N D A P O N D. You got it right? Y T I Z I N D A P O N D. But on AudioMark, that's gonna be like audiomark.com slash YDIZ dash in the pond. Oh, uh, uh, no problem. Thank you very much, Rides, for coming out. I really appreciate yeah. having you here. Any last word for your fans? Any last word for your fans? One love, don't quit. Because when you quit once, it becomes a habit. I love you, man. Thank you very much for having me. Yes, guys, with that, I have come to the end of the first rebranded series of the Chacha Spotlight segment on the Chacha Music Review Podcast. My name is Trimay Apis Donova. It doesn't change and it will never change. It's like, come your way with another episode. I say thank you. I want love. Bad boys, bad girls won't follow my combo. Oh, that's my bad one.